I think we already talked about inelastic collision already, all right? So today, I'm going to give you more, like, I guess, uh, what do you call that? Formal introduction of inelastic collision, and we'll do some um, problem solving. And once we do problem solving, I'm going to do some homework problem solving that's going to be important for your test, all right? So we already did something already for your one of the homework problems or one of the example problems that's going to be on the test. And we're going to do another one. I'm going to combine like two homework problems as one for the test. All right. So hopefully you should be able to put those together and, and get them uh, worked out. All right. So in inelastic collision, there are two types of inelastic collision, right? One that bounces off and other sticks together, right? So there are two types, right? There's one that bounces, right? Okay. And the other, they stick together. When they stick together, okay, we call it completely inelastic collision. Completely inelastic collision. For this one, when, 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 it, when it bounces off, we just call it inelastic collision. Okay, so just by reading the problem, you're going to be able to tell, right, uh, what kind of collision it is. So by definition, inelastic collision, a collision which kinetic energy of the system colliding does not get conserved. So basically, you will not have total kinetic energy before the collision does not equal to the total kinetic energy after the collision. And that's very, very important because an elastic collision, total kinetic energy before the collision did equal to the total kinetic energy after the collision. But in an inelastic collision, your kinetic energy is not conserved. Uh, for example, a ball being dropped to the ground and only rebounding to half of its initial height that it started from is noticeably inelastic because it lost some energy after it bounced, right? So the kinetic energy loss is transformed into some other form of energy, most likely a thermal energy. It heats up, okay? And so another example would be a putty dropped onto the floor and does not rebound at all. So the putty just gets stuck to the floor after it collides. The collisions where there is no rebound at all, right? The particles stick together are called completely inelastic collision. All right? So note, for completely inelastic collision moment, momentum is conserved, right? as long as the system is isolated and closed. And we already talked about what that means, right? No mass is gained or lost in the system, and there's no external forces acting on the system, all right? Even regular inelastic collision, it doesn't always have to be completely inelastic, and even the regular inelastic collision, momentum is also conserved. Momentum is always, always conserved, right? That's one of those four things guaranteed in life, right? No matter what kind of collision it is, momentum is always conserved. All right, so for example, a completely inelastic collision, you have mass one traveling at certain initial velocity, mass two as at rest. It doesn't have to be at rest. This could be moving this way or this way, right? It doesn't always have to be at rest, mass two. It could be moving. All right. And then after they collide, they stick together and become one. Right. You could think of like two trains, right? 
right? They couple together and they move together as one. You can think of it that way. So car accident where car in the back, rear ends the front car, and they lock together and they can move off as one, right? Bullet hitting a stationary target, getting embedded inside a target, right? Moving off as one. They're all basically the same kind of collision, all right? So speaking of bullets, let's talk about a ballistic pendulum, right? This is how they actually would calculate the initial velocity of the gun, old days, before like electronic devices were invented, all right? So here is completely inelastic collision problem, a ballistic pendulum. A ballistic pendulum is a device that was used to measure the speed of bullets before electronic timing devices were developed. The device consists of large block of wood of mass 5.4 kilograms. So this mass here is equal to 5.4 kilograms. Right? Hanging from two long cords, right? A bullet of mass 9.5 grams. So this is really small bullet. Now, 9.5 grams has to be converted into kilograms. So the mass itself is 0 0.0095 kilograms. Okay, 0 0.009 five kilograms. Well, that's pretty tiny compared to this big mass, right? All right. So this bullet is fired into the block and it quickly comes to rest and then the bullet and the block will travel as one, right? It will travel as one. So the bullet gets embedded inside. Right? It gets embedded inside. Right? And then this bullet and the block will travel together as one. Right? As one mass swinging upwards. Okay. Their center of mass rising a vertical distance of 6.3 centimeters. So the height that this block and the bullet gains is 6.3 centimeters. Again, I like to work with MKS system. So that means the height can be re recorded at 0 0.063 meters is what we should think about, All right? So height is 0 0.063 meters. Now they're asking, what was the speed of the bullet just before the collision? They want to know what this V initial of the bullet is before it gets embedded inside the block. So this is the ultimate thing that we're looking for. So we're going to have to work backwards to figure out this. So I'm going to break this up into phases. So phase one is the collision part, right? And phase two is the energy part, right? The conservation of energy part, right? So we're going to have to work backwards. So we'll start from here, and then we'll eventually find that. So here, when this block swings up, it gains height, so it gains potential energy final. But this potential energy final came from the kinetic energy after the collision. So after the collision, we have initial kinetic energy of the block and the bullet together moving as one. Okay? So the total energy initial must equal to total energy final. Okay? So initially, 
I have kinetic energy, initial, that has to equal to the potential energy final. Kinetic energy initial is just one half, right? The mass of the bullet plus the mass of the wood times V I squared. That is equal to the mass of the bullet plus the mass of the block times GH. Okay? So notice, I mean, this and this mass can cancel each other out to one. Right? So my initial velocity of the bullet and the block is equal to basically square root of 2gh. So what is that? Square root of 2 times 9.8 times height of 0 0.063 meters. Now notice if you don't put that into meters, you're going to get mixed units and it's going to be a headache. All right. So what is that, John? So it looks like uh, 2 times 9.8 times 0 0.063 is equal to, right, so square root of 1.2348. That is right, 1.11 meters per second is my V initial. So this V initial of the phase two, right? This is V initial phase two, is equal to is equal to the final velocity of phase one right after the collision. Does that make sense? Right? So we can say that this initial of phase one is final of now, initial of phase two is final of phase one. Now, we can take a look at the first phase. Here, when we work with collision, you have to work with conservation of momentum. I, I forgot R somewhere. Conserve of momentum. Okay? That means sum of all momentum initial must equal to sum of all momentum final. Initially, I only have the momentum of the bullet. After the collision, I have the mass of the bullet plus the mass of the block times V final, right? This V final of phase one basically is that. So here, let's plug in some numbers. I have 0 0.0095 times V initial of the bullet, which is what we're looking for, must equal to then 0 0.0095 plus 5.4 kilograms times 1.11. Right, meters per second. Okay. Therefore, when we when we add these up, right? So that times right, this is five point four zero nine five, right? And on this side, I guess something like 6.01112, right? 
and then your 0.0095 VI of the bullet. So VI of the bullet is equal to that divided by that. So that divided by, right, 0 0.0095 gives me 632.7, right? 632.75 meters per second is what the initial velocity of the bullet is. Okay. All right. So any questions? So now we have basically two um, example problems that are pretty important, right? I mean, besides other ones that we've been doing, right? So the monster example problem that we did was this one. Remember that? This crazy one. And now we have this one. Okay. Yeah, sir. Good question. You use momentum formula when there's collision happening. Then you use energy, anything before the collision and after the collision, right? To find what happens right before the collision and right after the collision, right? So, so basically during the collision, you use momentum. Anything after the collision, after the collision happens and things starts to move, right? Then you use energy, conservation of energy. Okay? Good question. All right, all right, all right. So, let's do some homework problems. Now, these are elastic collisions problems. All right. If I ask you to do this, I'm sure you could probably do it, but I think you'll be wasting a lot of time. So I'm only just going to probably do it for you anyway, so I might as well just do it. Right? So here we go. Number 12, we have a 0.45 kilogram ice puck moving east with speed of 3 meters per second. So it seems like if we have an ice puck, a puck made of ice, right? It's moving, right? It's moving with initial velocity, V initial, right? Of three meters per second east, which means positive x direction, right? So the mass of this ice puck, M1, is equal to 0 0.450 kilograms. Then it collides with a second puck with greater mass, okay? That's at rest. So V2 initial is zero meters per second. I guess V1 initial, I guess, is three meters per second. And M2 happens to be 0 0.9 kilograms. So this is the initial condition, basically. Right? This is before the collision. And then we're looking at it after the collision, what happens? So once it collides, and since this is an elastic collision, and that's very important, we know perfectly elastic collision, that means kinetic energy is conserved, right? So we already have equation for this.
we already have equation for this where when remember smart car for two crashes into a suburban what happens to smart car for two yeah it bounces the other way right so we know that this one's going to actually go this way so this is v2 final which we don't know right? and this one's going to be v1 final going the opposite way right so this is after this is final after the collision so even though this whole thing is collision we're analyzing it moment before and moment after as a collision problem so sarah what do we use what equation yeah momentum one right so so you have to treat this as collision therefore it's a momentum problem now because we don't have some variable i mean variables here we already derived this equation earlier so when when there, when it is a perfectly elastic collision we said before demonstration we derived this equation to use it remember so we're going to have to use this equation and this one right here so we'll find let's write them down so here we say v1 final so this v1 final so v1 final is equal to we derive this it says v1 initial times right m1 minus m2 over m1 plus m2 we derive this together so we can use it and from utilizing this right here from this we can derive v2 final and our v2 final is just basically m1 over i'm sorry my v2 final is m1 over m2 times v1 initial minus v2 in final i mean v1 final so we can use this right here so v2 final is equal to right m1 over m2 times v1 initial minus v1 final so these two equations are derived so we can use these two equations only for perfectly elastic collision with second mass being at rest before the collision okay so this is only true for So this has to be true, right? Only if it is perfectly elastic collision with the V2 initial is equal to zero, and this is at rest. If this is not at rest, we cannot use it. We cannot use these. If this thing is moving and this is moving, then we cannot use this equation. These two equations only hold true if this is at rest and it has to be perfectly elastic collision. All right. All right. Now it's just plug and chug them, really, right? I mean, we can't really use this yet because we have to find out what V1 final is to use this. So we have to use this first. So let's do that first. So what's V1 final? My V1 final is then 
V1 initial, which is 3, times M1, which is 0 0.450, minus M2, which is 0 0.900, right? Full thing over 0 0.450 plus 0 0.900. So if you work this thing out, my V1 final actually comes out to, this becomes negative, and wow, it becomes negative one meter per second as my V1 final. So it does bounce back. So we did predict that correctly. It will bounce back. So once we know that, now we can use this information to figure out what my V2 is. My V2 final is equal to M1 over M2 times V1 initial minus V1 final, right? Therefore, my V2 final is equal to M1, which is 0 0.4 divide that by 0 0.900 times V1 initial is 3.0 minus negative 1.0. So this becomes 1 half and this becomes 4 Therefore, my V2 final is equal to positive 2 meters per second. So this thing will shoot off at 2 meters per second, and this will bounce back at 1 meter per second. Okay. Oh my God. Now look at this. This one's not at rest. The next problem. This one's moving. So we cannot use these equations. This is this looks like pain. Let's do it though. Alright, let's do it. Let's do this. So a pair of bumper cars in amusement park ride collides elastically. When it collides elastically, we know two things, right? We know the momentum initial is equal to momentum final. We know that. And we also know the kinetic energy initial must equal to kinetic energy final. So these two things must hold. All right. So first thing is first. Let's do this to set it up. Because I'm eventually we're going to have to do both. So one has mass of 450 kilograms and other has 550 kilograms owing the difference on passenger's mass. If the lighter one approaches 4.5 meters per second and the other is moving at 3.7 meters per second and they collide, right, and they collide. So after they collide, they don't lose kinetic energy. So kinetic energy before has to be same as kinetic energy after. But we don't know the final velocity of mass 1, and we don't know the final velocity of mass 2. So we have two unknowns. So we need two equations, obviously. So let's start with the sum of all momentum equation first. I'm going to put the momentum 1 in blue, okay? And then I'll put energy in pink, okay? So we'll start with sum of all momentum initial is equal to sum of all momentum final. Okay. 
initially I have M1 V1 initial plus M2 V2 initial must equal to M1 V1 final plus M2 V2 final. Because they're both moving, so this none of them goes to zero. So let's plug in some numbers here. Here, M1 is 450 kilograms and is moving at 4.5 meters per second. M2 is 550 and it is moving at 3.7 meters per second. That is equal to 450 times V1 final plus 550 times V2 final, which we don't know either of these. So we're going to have to solve for one of these in terms of the other. So let's solve for V1 final. Okay. So if I multiply these two, I think I get something like 2025 plus if I multiply these two I get 2035 and that is equal to 450 V1 final plus 550 V2 final. When I add these up I get 4060 is equal to 450 V1 final plus 550 V2 final. So when I solve for V1 final, right, my V1 final, then it is equal to this minus this divided by 450, right? So it is 4060 minus 550 V2 final whole thing over 4.5. No, 4, 450. All right. All right, so we have one equation with two variables in it. Now we have to think about the kinetic energy. The kinetic energy, so sum of all kinetic energy initial must equal to sum of all kinetic energy final because it is an elastic collision. Here, I have one half M1 V1 initial squared plus one half M2 V2 initial squared must equal to one half M1 V1 final squared plus one half M to V2 final square. Holy shnikes. It's going to be messy. So I'm going to cancel out the one half because there's one half in every term. So I'm going to cancel out the one half. And I'm going to plug in some values. So here, M1 is 450 times V1 initial squared, which is 4.5 squared, plus 550 times 3.70 squared is equal to M1, which is 450 again, times V1 final squared plus 550 times V2 final squared. You could see what I'm going to do next, right? Yeah, it's, go it's going to be a friggin' mess.
I'm going to have to substitute this into here and square this. <laughs> right? So if I do this math, okay, you're going to get something like, I don't know, like 9112.5 plus 7529.5. Is equal to right 450 times 4060 minus 550 b2 final over 450 quantity squared plus 550 B2 final score. Okay. So, if I add these up, I think I get something like 16,642 is equal to this 450 times Curses foiled again. I gotta foil this. All right, and if I foil this, here's what I get this times this, right? This squared, I get something like uh, one six four eight three six zero zero minus this times this times two. Right? Right? So this times this times two, and I get four, four, six, six, zero, 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 V2 final. Then this squared. When I square this, I get positive. Three zero two five zero zero V two final squared whole thing over four fifty squared. Now I didn't multiply that out because notice I could cancel that with one of these with this plus five fifty V two final squared. I know, I know. It's algebraic mess, isn't it? It's not that bad, though. It just looks messy, but it's not that bad. So if you work this thing out, and if you were to um, cancel out one of these with this, and then divide this through for each term, here's what you get. Ready? I get 16642 is equal to. When I do all this mess, right, I'm going to get um, 36630.2 repeating minus this will be 9924.5. V2 final. Then this divide by that gives me positive, right? 672.2 repeating V2 final squared plus 550 V2 final squared. You can see where this thing is going now. It looks like a quadratic equation, right? So if I bring this to the other side, right, add these two, and then like put it in descending order, right, this is what you'll get. Zero is equal to one, two, two, two point two V2 final squared minus nine, nine, two, four point four repeating, right, V2 final. 
plus 19988.2 repeating. Now you put this in a quadratic formula. So get your calculators out. And you say, okay, go to quad, or if you just go on to internet and then search for a quadratic equation. I put in A, which is one, two, two, two point two 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 repeating. B negative nine nine two four point four 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 repeating. C I get one nine nine eight eight point two 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 repeating. And the answer I get, well, I get two positive answers here. What do I do? I got two positive answers. So here I get V2 final is equal to 4.42 meters per second or 3.7 meters per second. Which one's going to be the one? Which one do I pick? Let's think about this logically. How fast was this moving before the collision? It was moving at 3.7 meters per second. What would happen if somebody crashes into this thing? Would it go slower? No. It has to go faster than 3.7, correct? Therefore, which one should I pick? It has to be 4.42. It has to be 4.42. So this is the one that we have to choose for B2 final after the collision. So now that we know that, we actually have to stick this into this equation to figure out V1 final. So my V1 final is equal to 4060 minus 550 times 4.42 over 450. And if you work that out, my V1 final comes out to something like 1629 over 450, which comes out to 3.62 meters per second. Wow. Now imagine if I didn't do this problem for you. You'd be pulling your hair out. Right? Yeah. You'd be like, oh, screw this. I don't get it. There's too much numbers. Yeah, this is this is pretty much how you're supposed to solve it. I should have given you more room, I guess, but all right. All right, now I'm going to skip around a little bit because some of these take a little too long. So I, I want to make sure I cover all the ones you need to know for the test before I go back to the other ones. This one is extra credit. You have to show me all your work. You can't just give me the number and answer. Now, Sarah, this one has three phases. Okay? This has initial energy at this. This energy turns into kinetic energy right before the collision. That kinetic energy will give this big block some velocity, speed, right? 
that will crash into this smaller block, right? Now, both blocks will go off and then land so where this one's going to go like further out, probably. So then it becomes a projectile motion, right? So energy, collision, projectile motion for both. So this is going to take about a page and a half to do. It was like, yeah, right. <laughs> for me, it's not going to take page and a half. <laughs> I could do this in half a page. <laughs> right? So, so you have to really like think about this through. So this is really worthwhile. Yeah, I mean, if you're really bored, do it. Submit it. It's gonna you're gonna be rewarded. Number 15, this looks like like the ballistic pendulum we did just previously, but this is actually not that hard because we're not going backwards. We're actually going, you know, this way. So it's not as hard as right? so there's if there's a little it's, there's a little trick involved though. It's a little tricky. All right. So I could help you set it up. And I will give you the answer so you could check your answer. Is that, is that fair? All right. So for this one, I'm going to do. So not all of it, but most of it. We have an 18 gram rifle bullet traveling at 230 meters per second buries itself into a 3.6 kilogram pendulum hanging on a 2.8 meter long string. So initially, I have a pendulum and it's hanging on a string and this thing is actually 2.8 meters long, right? A bullet is shot into it so the mass of the bullet happens to be 0 0.018 kilograms. You have to put it in kilograms. And the velocity initial of the bullet happens to be 230 meters per second. So this is the initial condition. Then what happens? Then the bullet gets embedded inside The bullet gets embedded inside the block, right? And they will travel as one. So here, it's going to swing. It's going to swing. It's going to swing up. So it's going to swing upwards, right? And they want to know how much it's going to move horizontally they want to know how much it's going to move horizontally that's what they want to know to do this you need to calculate this angle theta And the height that this thing gets, so this is the height that this thing will reach. This height, H, is going to get potential energy at this point. Here, 
kinetic energy initially. Here, you're going to have momentum, collision here, right, Sarah? Right? So collision is going to be here. Here, energy. So if you look at this, this right here, right? I'm going to call that Y. That Y is actually the adjacent component of my length L, which is equal to 2.8 meters, and this angle theta, and this horizontal X right here, this X is the opposite component of my hypotenuse L. This Y is equal to L, because this length L doesn't change. Right? So this here is L. So it is L minus H. So you need to figure out what H is. So if you know what H is, you could calculate L. I mean, you could calculate Y. Then once you know Y and you know L, so you could calculate the angle theta. Then you could calculate the X afterwards using sine. Okay? So this is the trick. So you can say, right, theta is equal to right, cosine inverse of, of right, y over l. Once you know that theta, you can calculate x as L sine theta. So this is ultimately what you want to do to figure out what the x is. Okay. But to do that, you have to figure out this h. To figure out the h, you got to know how fast this thing is moving. To figure that out, you got to do the collision part. So start with sum of all momentum initial is equal to sum of all momentum final. You know, oh, there's only one momentum, which is the bullet. Mass of the bullet times velocity initial of the bullet. That has to equal to the mass of the bullet plus the mass of the block, right, times V final of phase one. This V final of phase one right, is equal to your initial V for phase two, which is the kinetic energy part. Yes? So once you plug all these values in, you should be able to get this. Right? So here, 0 0.018 times initial velocity of the bullet is 230 is equal to 0 0.018 plus uh, 3.6 times V final. So your V final of phase one is equal to, I get something like 1.1443 meters per second, which is equal to your V initial of phase two. Now, once you know that, so this is phase one. Now, this is phase two. You say, oh, 
the total energy initial must equal to total energy final. So here you have kinetic energy initial must equal to potential energy final. So here, one half m plus m times v initial phase two squared must equal to m plus m times gh. Solve for h. Notice how these will cancel out nicely. So here I have one half times 1.1443 squared is equal to 9.8 h. So the height is equal to, I get something very small, 0 0.0668 meters. Now that you know your height, you can calculate your y, you can calculate your theta, and you can calculate your length x. And the answer for x, I give it to you, so give it a shot. x is equal to 0 0.608. rest is just brain exercise, really. This is physics class. This is just regular algebra and trig. All right, so give it a shot. And let me give you answer to number 16, because number 16 is, is kind of tricky. I'll just give you the answers, okay? So kinetic energy of one piece is equal to 5,500 joules, and the kinetic energy of second piece is equal to 2,000 joules. See if you can figure it out. This one was kind of, kind of tricky. Again, this is two equations with two unknowns. Now let's take a look at the next problem right here. And most importantly, this one right here. This is going to be important for your test. Okay. This right, and this will be combined for your second problem of your test. Okay. So 17 and 19 will be combined. All right, so here we go. Number 17. We have 1,000 kilogram Toyota collides into the rear end of 2,200 kilogram Cadillac stopped at a red light. So Cadillac is at rest. Toyota, however, is moving. But we don't know how fast it's moving. We just know it has to be moving in order to crash into this thing. The bumpers lock and the brakes are locked and two cars skid forward 2.8 meters before stopping. The police officer, knowing that coefficient of kinetic friction between the tires and the road is 0.4, calculate the speed of the Toyota at impact. What is that speed? All right, so assume boxy Toyota and assume a pink Cadillac right, with wings. All right, so this is Cadillac. This is Toyota. They crash into one another. So this, so this thing is moving this way, right? So V Cadillac initial is zero. Right? So once they collide. They actually move together as one, right? They move together as one, and they travel a certain distance before coming to a stop. All right, so they're going to move together as one, and then they're just going to come to a stop.
uh, this should be V final is equal to zero. So this is V initial of phase two, actually. We don't know what this is. Okay. But we have to figure it out. So we need to figure out what the initial velocity of Toyota is eventually. So here's collision. Here is energy. So the energy part here, we have work done by friction. So we know work done by friction is equal to change in kinetic energy. Here is the collision part. And collision part, sum of all momentum initial must equal to sum of all momentum final. So we have to sort of work backwards. OK? So work done by friction is equal to F, oops, wrong color, F friction dot X is equal to kinetic energy final minus the kinetic energy initial. We know the kinetic energy final is zero because they both come to rest. So this goes to zero. We know the frictional force is equal to mu times mass of Toyota plus mass of Cadillac times G, right, the normal force, times X, times cosine of 180. Don't forget that. That is equal to negative kinetic energy initial, which is one half mass Toyota plus mass Cadillac times V squared. This V is the V initial right here of phase two. So notice how these two will cancel out nicely. So the mass cancels out. And cosine of net 180 is negative and mu is equal to, so this is negative one. So mu is 0 0.4 times 9.8 times x is 2.8 is equal to negative one half times V initial squared. This V initial is the phase two, right? So notice how the negatives will cancel out nicely. And if you solve for V, what do you get? Your V comes out to, right? So if you work all this out, I think that you get 21.952 square rooted is what my V initial is. And that comes out to 4.685 meters per second. Okay? Therefore, we can use this now for here. So M Toyota V Toyota initial plus M Cadillac V Cadillac initial, which is zero, is equal to M Toyota uh, to, uh, I'm sorry, plus, plus M Cadillac times V final, which is V initial of phase two. Right? So this is that. Therefore, M Toyota, which is 1,000 times V Toyota initial, which we don't know, is equal to right? 1,000 plus 2,200 times 4.685. So my V Toyota initial comes out to something like, I don't know, I think 14992.95 over 1000. So that comes out to 14.993 meters per second. So that's approximately 33.5 miles per hour. Okay. You don't need that, but just to give you an idea how fast the Toyota was going, it wasn't going that fast. Yeah. All right.
that last one, I swear. I'm going to skip this. I'm going to skip this. And I'm going to do 19, which is more important. Okay? An eagle, right? An eagle with mass 1 is equal to 4.3 kilogram, moving with speed of 7.8 meters per second, is on a collision course with a second eagle, two eagles fighting, right? Mass of 5.6 kilograms, moving at 10.2 meters per second in direction at right angle to the first one. Wow. So this is two-dimensional problem. So we have first eagle going Let's say it's going this way. So here's my spherical eagle. Assume a spherical eagle. It's easier to draw that way, right? And the mass of spherical eagle, mass 1, happens to be 4.3 kilograms. And it is traveling 7 points of V1. Initial is equal to 7.8 meters per second. X hat is going in the X direction. Then, my second eagle is traveling right angle to the first one. So this one is right, mass 2, which happens to be 5.6 kilograms. And V2 initial happens to be 10.2 meters per second y hat. Then what happens? Afterwards, they're going to lock up, right? They're going to lock up, and they're going to move off in a certain direction together like so, okay? Okay, that's kind of weird. All right, anyway, all right, so... What we're going to do is we're going to divide this up into x and y component. So think about sum of all momentum initial in the x direction must equal to sum of all momentum final in the x direction. So let's take a look at what happens. Initially, I only have mass 1 traveling at v1 initial in the x direction only right and this one's not traveling in the x direction at all so this doesn't have any x direction so plus zero for my mass two right so this is equal to now right so this is equal to mass one plus mass two right times V final X. The V final X is this. So let's put some numbers in here. M1, 4.3, times V1 initial is 7.8, is equal to 4.3 plus 5.6 times V final X. So if I solve for this, this becomes like 33.54 is equal to 9.9 .9 V final X. So my V final X is equal to 33.54 divided by 9.9, .9, which comes out to 3.39 meters per second X hat. So this is 3.39 meters per second x hat. Now let's think about the y direction. Sum of all momentum initial in y must equal to sum of all momentum final in y. Initially, my mass 1 is not going in the y direction at all. So it's 0. Right? Plus M2 V2 initial, this one is definitely going in the y direction, is equal to, right? We have 
m1 plus m2 times v final and y. This v final and y is this. This is my v final y. And this is your v final. Okay. So here, m2, which is 5.6 times 10.2 is equal to. Here, I got 4.3 plus 5.6 times VFY. This becomes 57.12 is equal to 9.9 .9 VFY. So my VFY is equal to, I get 5.77 meters per second Y hat. Therefore, if I have 3.39 this way, and I have 5.77 this way, this is my VF. And I've got to find this angle. So my VF, the magnitude of my VF, is equal to square root of, right? This is easy, right? 3.39 squared plus 5.77 squared, right? So if you calculate the magnitude of my VF, it comes out to something like, what is that? Uh, 6.69 meters per second. So that's the magnitude of my VF. The angle theta, theta is equal to 10 inverse of, right, 5.77 divided by 3.39. So my theta comes out to 59.6 degrees. So my final velocity is equal to 6.69 meters per second, comma, theta is equal to 59.6 degrees. So you should be able to put these two problems together, combine them, okay? Now what happens if there's more than one eagle, more than two eagles? What if there are two eagles, three eagles? Or what if there's like a sparrow flying and two eagles grab onto the sparrow simultaneously? Right? So now you have three, right? Think of it that way. And then the mother sparrow comes to rescue. Hmm, I don't know. All right, I end it there. All right? All right. Look for the test. I'll post it up later today. All right.